going on everybody welcome back to the channel it is the king koopa thank you for stopping by i got a great little video for you today i'm super excited to finally unveil the work truck build 2.0 um <laughs> we've been working on this thing for quite some time now like two or three years and i am i'm tired of it i am tired of working on this thing i'm ready to put some miles on it we've put like 400 miles on it so far had to iron out just a couple issues but we got it daler 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 daily driver friendly so far so everything so far has been pretty good um we haven't done any quarter mile passes with it yet just because i don't want to break it just yet because i'm tired of working on it so anywho uh i'm really excited to show this to you guys um it's almost summertime so we're going to be hitting the car shows pretty hard this year um trying to get some content out pretty hard for you guys so uh thank you for stopping by so uh i'm just going to show you the truck and we're just going to start showing you everything i've done and uh, just ripping through all the details. So let's go check it out. Boom, so here she is. This is our 2004 Silverado. It's a 1500 single cab work truck model. And uh, this thing was originally our winter daily. So I used to drive this thing all the time in the winter time and it just snowball effect and turned into a crazy full build, I guess you could call. I don't know, we got stupid amounts of money in this thing. <laughs> Uh, I was not prepared to build it this far, uh, that's for sure. So anywho, let's just start with the body mod. So starting off with the front end, we have the SS bumper, OEM air ducts, um, aftermarket center grill on there. That's from K Design Wings. Um, I have a bunch of links of those on my SS bumper video. Um, we have a 05 to 06 Tahoe air deflector on the bottom. We have an OEM HD grill that we put uh, painted and some Yitta motor headlights. I like those things a lot. Um, we went with a two inch cal HD hood from uh, Summit Racing. We did uh, install a 40K trans cooler back there and a light bar hooked up to the OEM fog light button. Um, we got some street scene mirrors on here, nice sleek. Those are manual mirrors um, since it's a work truck model. We went with uh, some 30% tint on the windshield, 5% tint. On the back row, those, uh, these are some AMI billet door handles. These things were super hard to find, but we got those out, um, sanded them down, powder coated them black, and then put some uh, ceramic coating on them. Um, so for the back half of the truck, this is my baby back here. This is the quadra steer bed. So for those of you who don't know, this is a composite bed. It has metal on the inside, but these are uh, made from 02 to 05. GM made a four-wheel steering truck, so it's a three-inch flare on each side to accommodate the rear wheels to turn back there. So it's a little bit bigger of an arch as opposed to the front arch inside here, but um, that gives us that like baby dually look. And uh, it also shaves some weight, so it tucked these wide wheels really well, and uh, you can pick this up super easily with two people, so I like it a lot. They're getting actually pretty rare, um, kind of hard to find. We went with some smoked dually lights on there. Uh, moving up here, we did a OEM third brake light that uh, I lens tinted and then put a backup camera in there and then uh, put some silicone around it to seal it since those don't seal very well. I love the backup camera. I'm not a huge fan of how the light turned out with the silicone. Uh, I just don't think it's a clean look, so we're gonna be dealing with that a little bit later. But uh, moving right along, so we did I guess an eBay special roll pan. I don't. I think it's an unbranded roll pan. Uh, I've had that for a long time, so I don't really remember. Um, and then we went with a Crespo wing on there. Nice product. Uh, their customer service though isn't the best, and they uh, do have some really long ship times. 
We also went with a Tiger soft bed cover. I've also had this for quite a few years. I love this thing. This thing's super easy. So to use this, pop the tailgate and then you just got a little handle here on both sides and then the whole thing just rolls right up. Which we do have a bed mat in there. I might take out to shave a little bit of pounds and it does have a uh, line X inside. And we do have a battery disconnect back here. Um, that is for our battery that sits back here on the driver's side since we relocated that to run it on the track Put that little disconnect on there and uh, I actually like that a lot. The thing comes in handy quite a bit I think I skipped over this part, but we have some eBay special tail lights. I actually had these on the white truck um, If any of you guys have followed the channel for a while you guys might have remembered Betty White my big lifted white truck I actually had these on there and they're pretty old. They've actually started to uh, heat up so much it started to melt the plastic and bubble back here so um, eventually I'm going to get some new taillights, that's on my list. But uh, the most important thing I think that's totally changed the look of the truck are the wheels and tires. So this is the first set of wheels and tires I've ever had that are not black. <laughs> and uh, these things are awesome. So these are pretty special. So these are made by a company called 3030 Autosport. Um, they're out of Indiana and uh, it's actually a really, really, really great company. Um, they are awesome to work with. So these wheels and tires are forged drag wheels. They're uh, called Legend 6 is the name of the wheel. And these were custom made to fit my staggered all-wheel drive setup. So it's almost perfectly flush with the front. And then the back end, I have it tucked in ever so slightly. Just so that on a hard bump, the tire will come up inside the fender. And it won't destroy uh, this composite bedside. So this thing... This truck moves quite a bit, just barely even touching it back here. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't want to destroy the bedside. And we have about a half an inch between the tire and the leaf springs inside there. So it's a pretty snug fit. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the offset. We had to take like 16 measurements for the rears, 16 measurements for the front, so they could get these precisely made um, so it'll clear the calipers, it'll clear the big brakes in the front and everything. So not exactly sure on the offset, but for the rear, we are running a 18 by 12, and that is with a 345, 35 Mickey Thompson tire. The fronts are an 18 by 10 with a 275, 45 uh, R18 Mickey Thompson tire as well. So uh, both Mickey Thompson's on the front and rears. These things are super sticky they're only going to last like 5,000 miles. So, <laughs> so they are not practical at all, but they all-wheel drive, they hook like crazy. Uh, that's for sure. I haven't been able to spin them yet in all-wheel drive. These things were super expensive. Um, I definitely don't recommend these wheels for everyone unless uh, you're okay paying some big bucks for it or you need something specific. So I don't really want to tell you the price that I paid for the wheels and tires, um, plus mounting the balance, and they have a custom translucent powder coat on them too. So uh, it actually changes shades of color depending on how much light and how much shade you give it. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, and then we have those true spike lug nuts on there that were from before, those were pretty expensive. But let me just put it this way that it was almost the same exact price that I paid for the truck originally when I bought it. <laughs> Which is ridiculous, I know, I know, I know, it's, it's dumb. but. Uh, I needed a specific setup and I spent months, like literally months, just trying to do research to find a drag wheel, you know, that is going to clear my big brakes, that's going to have the offset that I want, that's going to have the 6x5x, by five by, you know, 5, 6x5.5 five five lug pattern for the Silverados. And it's, it's almost like non-existent or you could get like a, you know, a cast, you know, Chinese drag wheel or, you know, they have welds and stuff, which... You know they got bow guards and stuff like that and but it's they, none of them had like the offset that i wanted none of them had the sizes that i could fit and then on top of that once i found once i found something that would work then i tried to have to find tires to fit wow i cannot talk trying to find you know drag tires because these are mickey thompson's they're et street ss's so pretty much the highest i can go before it's no longer dot approved um trying to find, since it's all-wheel drive, a wide drag wheel for the rear that's the same tread pattern as a drag wheel for the front. And that's like almost impossible, like completely non-existent. These tires, um, so like the fronts are a 28 by 10.5. So the fronts are pretty much what, you know, small tire no prep guys run on the rear. And 
the rears are 345 wide, so those are stupid wide. So trying to find drag tires that are about those sizes in the same exact heights, same brand, same tread pattern, is like nearly impossible. So it pretty much just came down to the Mickey Thompsons. And the tires are a little smaller than I want. I don't think they fill the fender gap very well. But uh, at this point, I didn't really have a choice. And it's kind of grown on me now. I'm used to the smaller wheels and tires. I'm used to usually, you know, having lifted vehicles or like I had the 22s on here before. So I, I, I like filling the fender gap and just making it look good. But they're a little bit smaller than what I'm used to. And I think they turned out pretty well. I will be posting a video about 3030 Autosport. They allowed me to come tour their facility and like they showed me everything, all their CNC machines, where the wheels are made, uh, showed them bead blasting, their powder coating shop, everything, because it's all done in-house. So these wheels are completely made in America and they showed me the whole process. It was awesome. I felt like Steve Jobs, like walking around and getting a tour and everything. It was actually really sweet. So I'm gonna do a video on just that for them because um, it's a really awesome company. But let's, uh, let's check out the interior and then we'll check out the engine bay. So we did do a steering wheel swap, added steering wheel controls, and uh, we added cruise control. We have our nitrous switch panel here on the side, which I'm gonna make a new panel to fit the larger button. We added carpet, we added more sound deadener inside. We have two Corbu one-piece racing seats with some G-Force six-point harnesses. These uh, mount to the cage, and these are anchored through the floor with plates on the bottom side. Um, we do have swing-out bars, which I still need to paint this one. We have some Atomic Fab and Performance custom seat brackets with my logo etched in there. Turned out pretty sweet. We also redid the headliner in like a black suede. We deleted the sun visors since uh, this truck hasn't had an interior in it for like three years, so I was used to not, not running those, and that's okay. We uh, upgraded to a new new body style shifter, and uh, we did swap in a center console. So we have a wireless charging pad, and here are uh, some gauges. That's our AFR fuel ratio gauge, our fuel pressure gauge, and then the one on the right is our nitrous bottle pressure gauge. Here's our base knob. We went with an Alpine double den. Um, it does have Kicker KS series in the doors and the B pillars. And there is a pancake sub underneath the passenger seat. And tucked back here is our nitrous bottle. So it was a snug fit. We have a billet bottle bracket. We also have a wrapped bottle heater. And we have a 3000 PSI blow off disc with a discharge tube that goes down through the floor. And if you're wondering how that nitrous is controlled, underneath here is our switch panel that I made. So it's all rib nuts, stainless steel hardware, has its own little fuse box, and uh, all the relays are mounted. Everything's labeled. Nice and neat, so if I ever have to remove the center console, there's one Deutsch connector to unplug, and this whole entire thing uh, is ready to come out. So we do have an LNC2000 for our nitrous, and uh, so pretty much how this works, we have a master arm button, and then we also have a bottle heater. And then right here, so I'm gonna redo this panel. This is one of the few things that I need to do because uh, I didn't like how the words didn't line up for what I wanted. So here is the purge. And then this is a two-step. So this does, so the master arm turns on pretty much the nitrous and the purge. I have the bottle heater able to turn on whenever I want because the bottle takes forever to heat up. So I can drive around with this and then uh, Whenever I'm ready to hit the nitrous, I can turn this on. And then I also have a wide open throttle switch on the floor. So uh, that activates when I'm at wide open throttle down there. But whenever we're cruising around, if we want to hit two-step, we can hit it here. But if we are launching and uh, want to use two-step and nitrous from a dig, so we will turn this on, activate that, and now our steering wheel button is ready to go. So what this does is I will come to a stop, Put my foot on the brake, be able to press the button, go full throttle, which that will disable nitrous, activate the two-step. So while I'm holding this, foot to the floor, RPMs can climb to about 4,000. And then as soon as I let off the button, it will disable two-step and engage nitrous. And nitrous will be shooting in probably like a foot out or something like that. So uh, haven't done it yet all-wheel drive and I'm still playing around with the two-step but uh, we're gonna get it dialed in. I've only put like 300 miles on this thing so far. 
did want an oil change. So I'm just trying to baby it right now and make sure everything's functioning before I really start to beat on this thing. Oh boy, man, I don't, I don't even know where to start. So uh, we put a lot of work into this truck and definitely put a lot of work into this engine bay. So the goal with everything I did here was pretty much to make it a usable clean. I wanted to still be able to work on everything. I wanted everything to be easily removable. You know, I didn't want to do like a SEMA build. Some of them SEMA builds have, you know, like the brake reservoir is tucked up underneath the frame. You know, it doesn't have uh, oil dipstick, doesn't have a transmission dipstick. And it's like, that. you know, that's really not feasible. You know, if like you actually drive this and want to have fun with it, like you need to be able to check all your fluid levels and everything like that. So about the only thing I really changed was moved the battery all the way back up underneath the rear end. So having to remove the battery, I've had to do that once already since the, the build has been complete. And uh, let me just say it was not fun. So let's talk about the performance. The engine, we have a 6.0 LQ9 that's been fully rebuilt. It is a stock bottom end. We didn't go with forged internals because originally when we decided to build this engine and swap it in, uh, I was not planning for that. I didn't have that goal in mind. Um, plans changed. Obviously, I should have went forged bottom end so we can slap some turbos on here. But uh, it has an LQ9 bottom end. We have 243 heads that have been milled and sent to Frankenstein. Those are their Frankenstein 2.0 heads. We also have a Trailblazer SS intake manifold that we fully shaved and spent a lot of time mudding and sanding. And it looks super clean. Uh, would never do one again. <laughs> was not worth my time that's for sure and uh, I didn't want to go with a Holly high ram or anything like that because we would have actually lost power compared to the Trailblazer SS intake um, we're not really spinning you know to seven or eight thousand rpms to really gain the full potential of a Holly high ram um, it also has a 4L80 transmission in there that's built and a street strip shift kit in it um, we've got a bunch of hardened clutch packs and a bunch of billet parts in there um, supposedly it's rated for a thousand horsepower it's what the shop told me. We have a uh, 38 to 3900 stall in there. We also have the NV149 all-wheel drive transfer case, custom-built drive shafts uh, that are currently rated for 800 horsepower, pretty much just depending on our rear end. For our rear end, we just have the stock, um, what is it, a 10-bolt? I don't even know what it is back there. Just the stock rear end with the Detroit True Track in it. And uh, it's been holding on so far, but if we ever blow that rear end, want to upgrade it to a 14-bolt, or to a Ford 9 inch or whatever later down the road, then we can stop. Then we can swap out the U joint back there, and uh, our drive shafts will be rated at a thousand horsepower. So, not that this thing is ever probably going to make a thousand horsepower, but I'd rather have it overbuilt than underbuilt. You know, we're already there, might as well do it. Um, but anywho, we have a Mighty Mouse catch can. Oh, I didn't even tell you how much it makes. So, this thing uh, is slow. <laughs> This thing weighs about 5,000 pounds. I'm just rough guessing it here, plus or minus 500 pounds. <laughs> I honestly have no idea how much this thing weighs. We did the quadrasteer bed swap, which shaved a decent amount of weight, but we, you know, added carpet, added sound deadener, put a roll cage in it, you know, swapped out the heavy seats and shaved a little bit and got racing seats. So, you know, realistically, I have no idea how much it weighs. Um, we will get it weighed eventually here soon. But uh, performance-wise, so Sean Fensler, Bumper Wilson Tuning, does all my tuning for me. Great dude. He has some high horsepower cars there. So before on the old 4.8 with a 4L60E, uh, medium cam with a 2800 stall, the truck made like 355 on a hub dyno. So uh, not, not too bad for a little 4.8, but it was gutted. That thing, that thing was not that fast. It was, it was super slow. So we swapped to the 6.0, and we've done a bunch of other stuff like E-fans, 10% um, underdrive pulley, you know, different alternator pulley. Um, we went to a larger cam, like a 236 by 242 uh, with a 112 LSA. Um, went to the Frankenstein heads, um, did a bunch of stuff, went to a 38 to 3900 stall. So we definitely bumped up the numbers here. But So two-wheel drive on a roller dyno, I think it was a Mustang dyno, it dynoed at 430 to the wheels naturally aspirated. So that was only like a 70 horsepower gain for all that money and all that work and stuff that we threw into it, which seems kind of pathetic. And that's where the nitrous comes in. So we did a 150 shot. 
The motor is currently set up for a 250 shot, but I really didn't want to push it that hard. I know nitrous is super hard on the motor, and honestly, I just want to drive it. I just want to have fun with it, so I didn't want to break it. Um, so with 150 shot, it made 580 horsepower to the rear wheels, and that is two-wheel drive. I was pretty happy with that. Some good numbers, especially in this truck. It definitely scoots pretty quick for a full-size truck. Um, but since we have swapped it to all-wheel drive, you know, that's more drivetrain loss. So we have, you know, an extra set of wheels spinning, you know, in the front drive shaft, the transfer case, the front diff. It's got a lot of extra work. So, and I didn't, I did notice just like me driving around, you know, kind of playing around with it and beating on it just a little bit. I noticed the decent amount of drivetrain loss. So two-wheel drive, it makes 580 of the wheels on nitrous. What's it make now? All-wheel drive, honestly, I'm not too sure. But I don't really get caught up in the dyno numbers too much. That's what I try to tell a lot of people. You know, because I had some people like comment on my pages like, yo, I got a 6.0 cammed making as much as your 4.8. Like, how is that possible? You know, every dyno is different. Dynos are a tuning tool. That is it. You know, it's a tool for the tuner to get your vehicle tuned right. Don't get caught up in the numbers. You know, this thing made 580 to the wheels. Well, 580 on a motorcycle is completely different than 580 in a school bus, you know. So it can make an insane amount of power, but if it is not the right power to weight ratio, it's still gonna be slow. So uh, honestly, don't get caught up in the dyno numbers too much. Um, I'd be more worried about like quarter mile times, but um, we're not trying to build this truck to spank everybody and their mother. So honestly, I'm really not too worried about it. I just wanted to build a nice clean truck that I could drive on the street to have fun with. Um, maybe win like one car show a year with, if that. I don't even know if this is really car show worthy, but. You know, there's some old dudes out there with some big money. <laughs> they got some nice vehicles, man. So, uh, I don't know. We tried. We just tried to do a nice, clean build. So, 580 of the wheels on nitrous. I'm okay with that. 430 naturally aspirated. Still not terrible. It's a fun truck to drive. Um, definitely should have went turbo, though. So, don't know if you've seen everything, but we went with a snail fabrication, billet coolant tank, um, Mighty Mouse catch can. We also went with an AFP tensioner on there. So that's a Cummins HD tensioner with the AFP bracket. So we were actually having issues on the dyno where the belt was flying off around 5,000 RPMs. So we got rid of that factory tensioner, put a AFP bracket on there, and uh, that thing holds the tension extremely tight. Um, here is our nitrous outlet plate. So this is where our nitrous and fuel get injected into the intake. And it might be a little tough to see, but down here, this is a custom bracket I designed up on AutoCAD. So this holds my nitrous solenoid, purge solenoid, and fuel solenoid turned backwards up underneath the intake. And right here is this 180 degree bend AN fitting that goes underneath the intake and then up the firewall. And that is where our four purge ports come out. So I divided it by four. There's one port, two, three, and four. So uh, just to add a little extra show. And uh, we also have custom pulleys done by Hoosier Pulley down in Decatur, Indiana. It's a good, nice little mom and pop shop. Got the King Koopa on there. And we also have the King Koopa YouTube channel down on the power steering pulley. We did all AN lines from the power steering pump and the gearbox that go underneath and actually go down through the fender and then come out here by the side of the firewall. We did swap to Hydra Boost and uh, that thing helps drastically. We did all new stainless steel brake lines, um, but for the brake system, since I haven't talked about that, we do have the four piston 2020 calipers up front from the 20, yeah, well, I already said that, 2020 Silverados, swap to there. I have a YouTube video for that. And we did use some 2004 Yukon dual piston calipers for the rear. So those are not too bad. Um, we had those powder coated. So uh, six pistons in total, and uh, it stopped extremely slow. So we swapped to Hydra Boost, and now this thing will lock the brakes up. It, it, it'll stop on a dime. We even went as far as powder coating all of our hose clamps, so everything looked nice and neat. Uh, you may notice our battery is no longer here since it is in the rear. We took the ECU, turned it sideways, put an ICT billet cover on it, and then I hand bent all these panels right here. So we actually have a billet tank underneath here, and that is for our windshield washer fluid. And uh, did all stainless steel hardware. So you might notice um, stainless steel, stainless steel, stainless steel. Um, we actually have a lot of black chrome. So black chrome acorn nuts. We got some black chrome back here. 
some black chrome back there on the firewall, some holding the fender in back there. Um, man, I, I spent a lot of money on hardware. We got black chrome back here and uh, tucked our LNC 2000 back there. We got some more black chrome on top of the billet coolant tank. So I think I spent, man, like $1,500 in just stainless steel bolts and black chrome bolts, but we got it. We got stainless steel bolts pretty much everywhere. Like on the, even, even down here holding the grill in stainless steel, stainless steel, stainless steel. So uh, I just wanted to make sure nothing was gonna look all rusty on this thing. We got a HHPE uh, radiator cover, grill cover, whatever you wanna call it. Also from them, we did a master cylinder cover. We got those powder coated and uh, got everything looking pretty nice up in here. Um, I did do a wire tuck on the engine bay, so there was a lot of harnesses that came down from the side up on top of the motor. I pretty much got it all tucked just back to that one little corner back there. Flows over, goes underneath the steering shaft, and then it comes around and splits out and goes pretty much all tucked underneath the intake. So we uh, tried to clean everything up as best as we could. We even filled a couple holes in the back of the firewall. Made some pieces of sheet metal, welded them in, sanded it, sanded it smooth. I think it all turned out pretty good. We even powder coated our windshield wiper arms. <laughs> we, we went a little excessive on this, but uh, I think it turned out really sweet. All right, ready to take her for a little rip. Worst part about this is getting strapped in. Takes six minutes to get to the store, five minutes to buckle in. <laughs> and if you get all these tight how it's supposed to be, this thing is really uncomfortable in certain areas. <laughs> So I am pretty much finished with the work truck on how I want it for the 2.0 version of the build. There's still a couple small things that we got to do. Like I want to do tail lights, and I wasn't a huge fan of the third brake light. So um, I kind of hit it very well, but there is a gash on the top of the roof from the previous owner. He jacked it up into his garage door support, and it actually creased in and then puddled water, So and it started to rust. So I popped it back out. But anyway, on the first, so like a couple weeks from now, we're dropping it off and they're redoing the entire roof. And at the same time, they're gonna shave the third brake light off. So it's gonna be perfectly smooth. 
and uh, we'll pretty much alleviate that issue. I'll have to figure out a new place to put the backup camera. Doesn't give me a whole lot of room with that roll pan, but we'll figure it out. And the other thing is like the nitrous switch panel I want to redo, which um, I got it sent to send, cut, send. So that should be here here soon. Uh, <clears throat> Anywho, so I think we're going to probably at some point in time turbo the Corvette, figure out the ins and outs on what to do, what not to do, what parts to buy, what parts not to buy. And then we'll probably do like a legit twin turbo setup on the truck and do it like super fancy, all TIG welded. So um, as of right now for the plans for the truck, I literally just want to drive it not break it and maybe take it to the track a few times but the biggest thing is right now i just want to enjoy it i've been working on it so long and for the last couple of years spent so much time on it so um i probably sound like a broken record player but anywho um i think that's pretty much a wrap on this video if you guys have any questions of course put them in the comments below i try to answer every comment best as possible um, if you enjoyed it, please hit a like, please hit the subscribe, stay tuned for some more content, um, cause we still got the Trailblazer SS, we still got the Corvette. Um, once we drop this truck off to get paint, I'm going to bring that project Corvette over and we're going to reassemble that. So we definitely got some stuff in the works and I'm going to be trying to hit the car shows hard this year, put some content out this year. So, uh, thank you for watching guys. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys are having a great day and I will catch you in next week's video. Peace.